Hello everyone, I'm uh, Bryce from Federal Cafe. I'm standing here in the Deansgate kitchen, which is feeling very empty without all of our usual hustle and bustle with the customers. Uh, I hope everyone's keeping safe during these crazy times um, and uh, haven't got cabin fever just yet. Uh, but we have just opened our Northern Quarter restaurant for uh, takeaway and we're also on Deliveroo, um, which, is, which has been really great for us to kind of start getting back to work and trying to return to some sort of normality. Um, but we do realize there's a lot of people who live outside of town and outside of our delivery radius who, who can't, get, um, can't get their fed fix. So we thought we'd just share uh, a recipe with, from one of our most popular dishes on the menu, which is our French toast, um, so that you guys can do it at home. Uh, we have been running a Instagram sort of campaign with the hashtag fed at home. So if you do give this recipe a crack or put your spin on it, please use the hashtag fed at home so that we can um, repost them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the ingredients that we're going to use and that you're going to need to get uh, and then we'll have a, a closer look at those ingredients and then we'll get to cooking. Um, so first thing you're obviously going to need is some brioche. Um, we've tried to make this, this recipe super friendly so there's going to be nothing really too uh, hard to get hold of. Uh, it should all be um, accessible from your local supermarket. Uh, so we like to get uncut uh, whole loaves of brioche. Um, this way we can cut them to the desired sort of size um, and uh, we like to give a nice generous portion. If you've been to Fed you know what we're talking about. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is some mascarpone. Uh, what we do with our mascarpone is we uh, loosen it by whisking it and then we add some vanilla essence and a little bit of icing sugar to taste to sweeten it. Uh, you can also just use whipped uh, vanilla chantilly which is just whipped cream with icing sugar and uh, vanilla as well or sort of any other creamy product you want to use if you want to get fancy you could use a little bit of cream cheese and take a sort of more cream uh, uh, cheesecake approach to it um, we use a nice mix of strawberries, blueberries and blackberries but again if you want to get a bit creative you can use uh, an apple compote or cherries or anything you really feel like but today we're going to use um, our standard berries and what we like to do with them in the restaurant is we macerate them. Um, the way we do that is we add a little bit of sugar, a little bit of lime juice, and a little bit of lime zest. Uh, if you were going to use a punnet of, so let's say, a punnet of strawberries, punnet of blueberries, and a punnet of blackberries, you'd probably want about two to three tablespoons of sugar and the zest and juice of one lime. Um, but very important, taste your berries. See what they are. If they're really sour and really tart, maybe don't put any lime in. If they're really sweet, cut the sugar back. It's really important to taste your ingredients and know what you're working with before you start cooking. Uh, you're also going to need a little bit of butter, which we're going to use to cook the brioche in. Uh, we like to make a white chocolate and almond crumble. And the way we do this is we take plain white chocolate, uh, we spread it out on a baking tray with uh, a little bit of uh, baking parchment on the tray and we pop it in the oven for about 10 to 20 minutes uh, on a lowish heat, sort of 160 degrees, until it starts to melt and caramelize. And you'll see it will almost turn quite biscuity and crumbly. What we do then is we take out the oven and while it's cooling we break it up into little chunks and add toasted almonds. But again, put your own spin on it if you want to use a sort of granola or um, sort of just some toasted pecans or different nuts or maybe a little bit of peanut brittle. It's just there for texture so anything you want to add to make it crunchy, maybe some just some toasted coconut if you want to keep it simple. Um, and we're also going to use some salted caramel. Uh, we make this at the restaurant. You can just buy um, any sort of good quality uh, salted caramel from the supermarkets or just caramel and add some salt to it. We like to spice ours with cardamom. Um, but again, it's up to you. It depends on what you're making. If you're making a twist on this, you know, feel free to spice it up however you like. Um, but if you do want to make it at home, it is very simple. What we like to do is we take equal amounts of sugar and water and we boil it down. And as it starts to caramelize and turn dark, we take it off the stove add about 50 grams of butter and 100 mils of cream and whisk it up. Careful when you're adding the cream because it does spit up and goes a bit crazy because you're adding cold ingredients into really hot ingredients. Um, but it is worthwhile. There's plenty of recipes uh, available online for homemade uh, salted caramel if you do want to give it a crack. Ours is a little bit of a closely guarded secret but cardamom is one of our secret ingredients. Um, and then the only other thing you're really going to need is a little bit of a batter. Uh, because we're in a restaurant, we like to make things rich and indulgent, so we tend to use eggs, cream, a little bit of brown sugar, and a bit of vanilla. 
but you can simply just break some, whisk some eggs up with some milk, uh, just just to loosen up those eggs, and that's just to sort of coat the brioche to give it that lovely sort of batter that we can caramelise in the pan. Um, so yeah, let's get cooking. So here we have our ingredients that we're going to need today. We've got our slice of brioche, which is ready to go. Our mascarpone, which has been sweetened up. Our berries, which have been macerating for a couple of hours now. This is our white chocolate and almond crumb, and a little bit of salted caramel sauce. This is the batter that we're going to need. We've got some icing sugar just to finish, and our butter for cooking. So we've got our pan on here on a medium heat. Uh, it's been heating up for uh, just a minute or so, so it's ready to go. We take our brioche and we're going to get it into our egg batter. Let me just turn it over a couple of times, making sure it soaks it up. Another little tip, if you cut your brioche quite a while before you need it, what happens is it starts to dry out on the edges. That means it's just going to soak up more of the custard mix. We're going to start by putting a couple of knobs of butter into the pan. You want to start with quite a bit because you want to make sure that there's enough in there to keep it cooking. But save a little bit because as the butter starts to brown you're going to want to add more and more butter just to stop it from going black. That's how you control the temperature of your butter. Now as the butter starts to foam we get our French toast in there. And just leave it on one side, start to let it colour and then we're going to turn it round as it, as it cooks. And that's what we're looking for there, just a nice even caramelization over the bottom piece and flip it over, do the same on the bottom side, on the other side, and then we'll do all four sides as well. So now that our brioche is nicely caramelized, we're going to get the plating. First we're going to do, get our salted caramel on there, swirl it around nicely. Obviously this is very rich, so you don't need too much of it. brioche on next. Let me get some of our berries on there with their juice. Just let them flood the plate again, really nice and generous. And we're going to take our white chocolate and almond crumb. Dust with a bit of icing sugar. And then with a little bit of hot water Finish with a nice dollop of our mascarpone. And there we have our French toast with white chocolate and almond crumb, macerated berries, and whipped mascarpone.